In this lesson, we are going to talk about notation, a statistical model, the ANOVA, expected mean and variances, and the variance component for a nested design. Now, recall in lesson 11a, we talked about how a nested design has a hierarchy of factors. So we have, in the PLAS example, we had a factory one, and then we had our operators, where this operator is only operating in this factory. We, she isn't, he or them aren't coming over to factory two or three. And so this one person is only in factory one. This is what's going to make it nested. In our machine head example, which is right here, we had a machine and then we had heads. So our machine is our big factor or our, uh, what we're gonna call factor A. And then we had our heads, which are gonna be nested within our machine. So let's talk about some terminology. So we have a factor A and in our case is going to be the upper level. Um, and that's, it's arbitrary. You could have chose either one, but for the sake of our notes for some, uh, consistency will have factor A be the upper level, which can be fixed or random. And in our case, we had five machines and it was a fixed effect. Then factor B is going to be the nested or the lower level. And we're going to randomly select B for each of our AI levels. Now notation wise, because we're, it's nested, we're going to have this notation which says our J level nested in our I or our upper factor level. For our number of replications is gonna come from the number of times or the number of replications for each level of beta Ji in A. Our total number of EUs is N times AB. So similar to what we've seen, but now we have this nested type of idea. Our summary statistics are here, where our Y is IJK. I is representing the ith level in A. J is representing that Jth level, and K is going to represent the replicate of the Jth level within the ith level of A. Here's some summary statistics uh, for you. Now, our statistical model, you might think, might have thought before seeing this would look a little different and might have an interaction term because we have talked about factorial designs that have had interaction terms, but that's not the case. Um, in a factorial design, we have the ability to cross everything because we assume that the levels of A and B are identical. But in this case, we cannot cross everything because the levels of B are dependent on the level of A we're in. That is, if we go back to our plastic example, level B, the operator, depends on what factory we're in, okay? So we don't have an interaction term, but we do have this nested beta subscript Ji. We still have our grand mean. Now again, our alpha i can be random or fixed. If it is random, don't forget that it has a distribution on it. And then we, will, we would go about estimating our variance term. Our beta Ji is a random effect does have this distribution. And so we are gonna to have to estimate this. And then we have our random error. We assume that the random components, our variances are independent of each other. Okay, so let's look at an ANOVA table to help us figure out how we would test in a nested design. So this is our partial ANOVA table where we have our A, which is our upper level. Um, in the case of our machine head example, this would be the machine. And then we have BA. This notation is just helping us, helping us to remind us 
that B is nested within A, okay? And that's the same notation right here. I have your sums of squares and your total sums of squares here if you'd like it. But really what we wanna focus on is looking at the expected mean squares. This is gonna help us understand what the denominator will be for our ANOVA tests, okay? So for factor A, if we were in a fixed case, our hypotheses would be looking at alpha i equal to zero for all of them versus not equal. And if it was a random case, we'd be looking at the variance. In either case, under the null, both these terms, that term or this term, depending on your case, would be canceled out. And we would be left with this purport, uh, this number here, which we can tell is going to be the same as the expected means of BA. So what this tells us is that our F test for testing our main effect or factor A is going to be MSA divided by MSB in A with the degrees of freedom uh, related to those. Okay. For our factor B or a nested we would have a hypothesis of sigma squared beta equal to zero. And then of course the alternative is greater than. And if we come up here under the null, this for both cases would be canceled out. We'd be left with the sigma squared epsilon. And we can tell that these two match. And so we know that this is going to be our denominator. So that's why down here, our test statistic is MSBA divided by MSG, where this degree of freedom should be A, B minus one, and this degree of freedom should be A, B, and minus one, because our degrees of freedom should match with our numerator and denominator. So that's where I'm getting them from. Our variance components are similar to how we've gotten them previously. Um, our sigma squared epsilon is going to be our MSE. And then our variance for our beta is going to be MSB nested in A minus MSE divided by N. And if A was random, then we would also estimate that. So key points that I just want to recap over is that B is nested within A, so we have a hierarchy of factors. When we're testing A, B, we're trying to see if there's a variability from machine head to machine head. And when we're testing A, we're looking to see if there's a difference between the two machines. All right. We find our test statistics based off looking at our expected mean squares and we're still trying to understand those variance components. Hopefully as you guys start to look at these different designs we're doing, you'll start to recognize that some are structurally the same as others, but the interpretation and the um, understanding behind them are different. And in the case of the two-factor nested, structurally it looks similar to a CRD with subsampling. Um, okay, if we recall when we were talking about subsampling a little bit before the midterm, we had a car example. Okay, and then we have our nested design. So when you implement these into jump or R, it's going to be similar to what we've already seen. But conceptually, they're going to be very different. CRD with subsampling, we don't care or we're not interested in the effects of the EUs. That is, if you go back to our car example, we were interested in the brand. So what we did is we had the brand of our car, which is our treatment. We took that car and we drove it around a couple times to get our observational unit. And so we're not really interested in the variability between EU and EU. We're more interested in how do the treatments differ. 
In a nested design, we have two factors, A and B, which are of interest to us. And so the middle level in a nested design, this B, which would be the machine head, we're interested in our problem and we're interested in if there's variability from machine head to machine head. Okay, there's also with nest design and a lot of the designs we've talked about, there are some extensions. The first extension could be if we don't have equal number of nested treatments, maybe factory one in our plastic example has three operators and factory two only has two operators. We could also include more nested factors. So we have one nest and then we have another nest. This looks a little bit more similar to our plastic example. So with the ANOVA table and kind of understanding overall what's happening, we are going to now in the next lesson move to the machine head experiment example and see how it is done 